fades. Nelson Nadota right there. You can see Kristen Williams attacking the rim, getting into the paint and getting into the heart of the defense. And then this offensive rebounding by Edwards has been phenomenal for Connecticut. But when they get out in transition, oh, you better watch out because they can score the basketball. Uh, another side note storyline to this matchup is, of course, this game is in Bridgeport, which basically makes it a home game. Very quickly, Monica, what is NC State going to deal with in that hostile environment? Oh, man, UConn fans that yeah. have only had to travel for an hour and will be loud and proud. I think according to Vivid Seat, their fans have bought about 84% yeah. of the tickets available. The good news for NC State is they are uniquely acclimated to winning on the road. They are actually 9-1 and one in away games this year. I know it's technically neutral, right, a neutral court. Heck Six and no there as well. We also have a nightcap in the Wichita region. We've got a full night of basketball for you. We'll see you at 7. Looking forward to it, L. Again, to recap here, the NCAA Women's Championship, it continues tonight. Two more Elite Eight matchups right here on ESPN and the app. You have the second seat, UConn, taking on the one seat, NC State. That's at 7 Eastern. And in the third seat, Michigan, they square off against the top seed, Louisville. Spots in the final four on the line, Shay. Let's go. Speaking of. Uh, let's check out what's going on right now. UConn senior forward Kristen Williams has scored a double, has scored in double digits in all three tournament games, including a team high 15 in the win over my alma mater, Indiana. This game follows us. Number two, UConn taking on NC State coming up next on Focus ESPN. Ready. Yes, she is. It, tonight decides our final four. The NCAA Women's Championship is brought to you by Capital One, who will join South Carolina and Stanford in Minneapolis on Friday. NC State, technically the one seed, but Elisa Kunain recognizes they're the underdogs in this Bridgeport environment. But she's coming off her first double-double of the tournament after a thrilling win against Notre Dame. In a season of ups and downs, UConn has ended up where they always do, in the Elite Eight for a 16th consecutive time. And with Paige Beckers hitting her stride and trying to get home to her native Minneapolis for the Natty, it's going to be a good one tonight. Let's go. Show me Beyonce's big, but Raina blows her away. We want to play every game like it's our last because it's win or go home. We want to do something that Louisville basketball has never done before, and that's win a national championship. We're not done yet. We want to keep making history. Oh, the hair is on the back of my neck. Let's take a look at the bracket. Bridgeport final tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern, NC State and UConn. I mentioned UConn here quite a bit as we officially say hello in studio. I'm Elle Duncan, as always, joined by the Queens, Monica McNutt, Nikki Fargus. Not a whole lot of losing around here, but it's been a real long time, ladies, since NC State has been here. We mentioned how often UConn's here. Mm -hmm. Last time the Wolfpack were in the Elite Eight, 1998. Let's just go down memory lane and remind the good folks at home uh, what was happening then. Elisa Kunain, the star of NC State, hadn't been born. In fact, she was like two years from being born. <laughs> gas was like a dollar per gallon. Titanic won the Oscar for Best Picture. And speaking of Oscar, the top song was Getting Jiggy With It by Will Smith. By the way, we came up with this concept yesterday. <laughs> before before, before the before Academy Oscars. Awards, just so you know. This was, oh, Jesus Christ. Look at This us. is what was also happening in 98. Monica, how old were you? I was nine. There's me and Look at you, you're so mm -hmm. cute. And Nikki, myself. you were doing what in 98? I was old enough to be Monica's mother. Okay. <laughs> well, I say you're aging backwards. And um, oh. I oh, clearly did not have access to hair care. <laughs> And I was outside quite a bit, so that there it is. Very much my homegirl dyed my hair look. Oh my god. It's great though. It's 100% my you playing softball? Look at yeah. you go. Oh, we used to do the caps with the yeah. plastic. It's fine. <laughs> um, I mentioned not a lot of losing around here between these two teams. 60 wins. Not a lot of losing, but Monica, when you look at this particular matchup, where do you think it's going to be decided? Well, it's going to be in the paint, L. And obviously, UConn is coming off of a terrific performance when it comes to activity in the paint, both scoring and rebounding. And so, Alyssa Kunain, who is the heart of this NC State Wolfpack squad, needs to have another double-double performance and probably then some, right? But I do think she has a great supporting cast. Reina Perez obviously came up with the biggest play of the ball game. I think Jada Boyd could be an X-factor off the bench, and I love what Diamond Johnson brings. 
Well, when you think about these teams, you talk about the points, right, in the paint. What happens when you're that close to the basket? One, it gives you great rebounding opportunity. The second thing it does is it establishes those easy layups, and that's what you got to look at. How many missed layups are we talking mm -hmm. about? So layups, putbacks, offensive re rebounding, that's going to be key as well. One of those intangibles as well, this is – pretty much a home game, right, for UConn, NC State, recognizing that they are uniquely fitted to actually win on the road, as they were the first team ever last year, you may remember, to go on the road and beat two number ones when they did it against South Carolina and Louisville. So they're feeling good right now. We'll see what happens. Kristen Williams has been fantastic for a UConn team where seemingly everyone can eat on any given night. Six minutes from tip, we're going to get you out to Bridgeport with Brian Rucco, Rebecca Lobo, and Holly Rowe after this, and Andrea Carter. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Tonight in Bridgeport, Connecticut, someone's headed to the Final Four. Will it be top seed NC State or two seed UConn? Wes Moore, Gino Ariema, one step away from Minneapolis as we take a look at our black bracket. South Carolina will face the winner of Louisville, Michigan who will face off later on tonight on ESPN. And Stanford awaits the winner of this NC State UConn contest. And in case you missed how NC State got here, well, we need to get you caught up. Mabry dancing away. Defensive end has been the story for the first time since 1998. NC State is Elite Eight bound. Hey everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo, Andrea Carter, Holly Rowe with us as well. What drama here Saturday in Bridgeport? Two very different historical paths, Rebecca. Look at NC State. They have not been here in 24 years. Meanwhile, UConn playing in its 16th straight Elite Eight. And tonight is an opportunity for the women on these teams to do something incredible. Coach Oriama told us that in the Elite Eight game, there's usually a player who plays great and leads her team to the Final Four. The question is, who will that player be and which team does she play for? You know, we talk about the 16th straight trips. It really is incredible when you put it in historical context. Meanwhile, UConn seeking its 14th straight Final Four appearance as we send things over to Holly Rowe. Well, for UConn to go to the Final Four, they'll have to get a sensational effort from Paige Beckers, and she gave it in their last game. She is just in her fourth start after knee surgery that kept her out through December, but you wouldn't have known it. She was flying around, diving on the floor for loose balls. Her passion and her poise led the way. She did have one scary moment where she hit that knee. She told me today at practice she's feeling okay. She is a little in their last two games, she's doing a ton of rest and recovery and rehab, including cryotherapy, a pulse machine that has magnets she places on either side of her knee to help the healing process. She said, I'm feeling like a 10 out of 10. She said she is a little sore. Now for more, let's welcome in Andrea Carter. Thank you, Holly. Well, you talk about the passion of Paige Beckers, and I'm going to talk about the power of Elisa Kinane for NC State in the paint. She told us before their game against Notre Dame, when I am one-on-one, -on -one, I need to score. And she needs that same mentality tonight if she catches the ball and looks, and there is no weak side defender. It should be an automatic attack over and over. But what makes her tough is even when the help side defense comes, it's a read and react. She can score on one defender. She can score on multiple defenders. She needs that power and patience tonight, Ryan. Well, her head coach, Wes Moore, just so proud of Elisa Kinane, what she's helped lead with this program. Coach Moore in his ninth season at the helm, first time NC State has been to the Elite Eight since 1998. Meanwhile, for Gino Oriema, this is his 27th Elite Eight appearance, 21 and 5 in the previous 26. And we were talking to Gino earlier today at shoot around. He said, you know, you're always nauseous on a morning like this, but now even more so because you don't know how many more of these you're going to have left. This crowd obviously mostly adorned in Yukon blue. 
But as Wes Moore told his team at the start of practice yesterday, you've gone to South Carolina and won when they were the number one team in the country. You went to Louisville and won when they were the number one team in the country. Both meetings last year. And he said, everyone in that crowd, they can't touch you on this floor. This Elite Eight game is underway. Here is Fudd. Fudd finding some space, unable to hit. Followed it up, slapped it on the floor, but grabbed by Kayla Jones. Taking a look at our Capital One starting lineups. NC State with great continuity. Perez, Crutchfield, Brown, Turner, Jones, and Kanane in an early bucket for Kayla Jones. Both teams starting out in man-to-man -man defense. Oh. NC State worked on that play yesterday in their practice. Nice early look. You see the UConn starting five. Paige Becker, AZ Fudd, the number one recruits in the nation back-to-back -back years. Fudd, the freshman, gives UConn another chance here. Williams cut it on a three. And Gina Oriama told us earlier today, Rebecca, watch out. If Williams hits her first couple threes, she could end up having a 30-point night. And both coaches talked to us about the importance of getting to the glass. Connecticut with a nice offensive board on the last possession. Perez, the rainbow, a little too strong. And Aaliyah Edwards, who was a major factor in the Sweet 16, on the rebound. Williams spins it up and in. A nice start for Kristen Williams, who talked with us about finding consistency this season, knowing the book on her had been inconsistency throughout her career. Kanane off on a three, Fudd the rebound. Here is Beckers. Her Holly detail, Beckers dealing with the knee, off on that three, and the rebound, Brown Turner. Coach Orama, however, will be happy if the majority of Connecticut shots are taken by AZ Fudd and Paige Beckers. Kanane just had it taken away by Edwards. A sophomore from Canada, Lee Edwards. Williams trying to find an angle. And Brown Turner held her ground nicely. Wow, nobody guarded Kayla Jones, who hits the baseline jumper. Great job by NC State to recognize the lack of communication by Connecticut defensively. First time these teams have met since 2007. An early 5-4 lead for the Huskies. Beckers on the cut, waits, finishes, plus the foul. Great job by Paige Beckers to fake not only one defender coming to help, but two. She gets the back cut. Connecticut does this so well. Pump fake, one goes up. Pump fake again, another goes up. Just smart poise. Paige Beckers was the player of the year in the nation as a freshman last season. This year derailed because of injuries, but found her way back to the floor. Told us the other day she knows she's not going to be last year's Paige Beckers, but she wanted to do whatever she could to be out there with her teammates. AZ Fudd off the weak side, air ball. Fudd finds some space, unable to hit. Nelson Adota flags it down. Williams will take and hit Kristen Williams with seven early points. Kristen Williams looks hungry to me. And it's not just her ability to finish her shots, but she's seeking them. She's going to the open spot on the floor and asking for the basketball. Here's Jones. He's looking for Crutchfield, who had a monster second half for NC State in the win against Notre Dame. Seven to shoot, Brown Turner, no. Rebound foot. I don't like the possessions for NC State when Elisa Kamein does not get a touch, or at least a look. Beckers will pull. Doesn't get the roll. Edwards battling. Jones winning for the Wolfpack. 
NC State's looked a little disjointed on this end thus far. There it is. Kanane, bucket and the foul as Nelson Adota reached in. Well, Kristen Williams off to a terrific start in this game. Little jab step jumper. Time now for a player spotlight brought to you by Sirius XM. Led the team in points, steals, and minutes this season. And had to be the anchor as UConn dealt with a lot of injuries. Holly. Well, she's absolutely held this team down. And Gino Ariama said he heard her today in a press conference earlier this year. He broke me, meaning her coach, Gino, broke her. And he said, you know, I had to do it. I hate to hear that, but I want her to be successful. I want her to know that when she's on this court in this moment, that she's been through something more difficult. Those moments happen in private at practice, not in front of the world. And he said, I might have broken her, but she's built herself right back up to who she is right now. It's beautiful. And I thought he had a great way of sort of bringing a synopsis to that, Rebecca, when he said, would you rather have that moment in practice with just us or on the big stage in front of everyone? No, you you, you want it then. You would rather not have it at all, Ryan. Yeah. But if you're going to have it, you'd rather have it in practice. Kayla Jones off to a good start. Williams, not that time, rattled out. Shots looked excellent in the early going. NC State, better possessions last few times down. Here's Kanane, wants a touch. Crutchfield gets it to her. Out of the double. Good movement here. Perez penetrates, kicks. Jones, short. And out of bounds. That'll bring us to our first timeout. The UConn, a two-point lead early. Always gravy for Connecticut when Olivia Nelson Adota can hit, get the bounce, trickle around from range. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Last time NC State was in the Elite Eight, they were led by the legend Kay Yao and defeated UConn. Back in 1998, it has been a historic 21-22 season for Westmore's group. Most wins in school history. First time since 84-85 that they were the regular season and tournament champions of the ACC. And of course, the 24-year drought since the last time they were in the Elite Eight. They have become a perennial power now under Westmore. As Perez comes up with a steal, just like she did to win her Sweet 16 matchup against Notre Dame. Kanane gets a touch, looking for some space. Kanane couldn't finish it. Nice D from Nelson Adota. Yeah, smart defense by Nelson Adota. She already has one foul, can't afford an early second. Fudd looking in. Finding Edwards. A little dangerous on the pass, taken by Brown Turner. And a traveling violation is called. Let's go to Holly. Well, you saw all of those historic things that the program has done under Wes Moore in the last four years, but he wanted them to take it one step at a time. So he actually went to his neighbor, Ron, and asked him to build them a step. And every time they come into the locker room, they actually take that step. You see the names of their opponents built right into the step. So good job, Ron. The woodwork is impeccable. I've got the step right here with me. And well done, sir. <laughs> Paige Becker is unable to hit. I said, how'd you know to go to Ron to make the step? He said, oh, you should see the things he makes in his garage. <laughs> Kanane straight on jumper won't go. Elisa Kanane he is one for four from the floor to start this game. Coming off a double-double and a really consistent aggression in the Sweet 16 against Notre Dame. And a really nice pace about herself on the offensive end as well. Nelson Adota looking for a cutter. Gonna settle with Williams. She will fire. Can't hit. Nice box out from Kayla Jones. Keeping Edwards off the offensive glass. Jones, three of four from the floor. Rest of NC State, one of seven. Brown Turner can't hit the three. Kanane the offensive rebound. And nice job by Edwards diving back in for the steal. Beckers. Perez 
trying to stay attached to Fudd. Nice, big to big passing. Nelson Adota to Edwards for two. Previous possession, you saw Leah Edwards be a little off on her pass, Olivia Nelson Adota. But Nelson Adota leads the UConn team in assists. She is terrific in the high low. One of the best passing bigs in the nation. Crutchfield. She got it. Kai Crutchfield lives for these moments. She could be the player that needs to be the one who plays great to lead NC State to the Final Four. It was incredible in the fourth quarter and the second half in general against Notre Dame. Westmore said, now we just need to get her to do that all game long as Williams has two more. How about Kristen Williams posting up on the bigger Jakia Brown Turner and still finishing? Brown Turner, guarded by Edwards, drags around, eight to shoot inside of a minute to go in the first quarter of this Elite Eight matchup. Perez fires away and hits. What a tough shot over the long arms of Olivia Nelson of Dota. What a pace for this game too, Ryan. Hardly any whistles so far. First three of the game for NC State. Nelson Adota. Oh, nice cut. Fudd gets the foul called. And AZ Fudd will shoot two. Guys, we have seen the beautiful passing of Olivia Nelson Adota, but she also needs that same energy from her teammates. Look, instead of the ball going there, it can go right directly into Olivia Nelson Adota. They've got to look to find her. That's a great seal in transition. She's finding her teammates. They've got to find her as well. And she's certainly giving them a big target. You saw the room she was creating, Andrea, having both arms high, both hands spread. Fudd misses short on the free throw. Izzy Fudd, an excellent free throw shooter as well, 92% on the season. She's 0 for 2 from the floor thus far. Sometimes when she misses shots early, it can have a little effect on her. Oftentimes Paige Beckers has to encourage her, hey, keep shooting. You're an amazing shooter. That happens to freshmen sometimes. Yes, it does. Even the most talented ones. Diamond Johnson in off the bench for NC State. Five seconds left in the quarter. Johnson trying to find space, cuts through, misses the layup, and that'll do it for the first quarter. Connecticut leading by two after one. A trip to the Final Four on the line. A place Gina Oriema has been 13 straight seasons. Will he be dancing again? Holly Rowe talks with Gino next. Welcome back to Bridgeport here with UConn coach Gina Oriema. And coach, what do you think about the pace and the action so far in this first quarter? I think the pace is good. You know, I think both teams are uh, are getting up and down the floor. You know, it's been a relatively clean game so far, you know. So if we can just keep it among the 10 of us out on the floor and keep the other guys from getting involved in the game, I think that's good. I think both teams are doing exactly what they're good at, you know. And so um, I would expect another 30 minutes of this. Kristen Williams is off to a good start. Who else? do you want to see get going right now? Well, I think Paige is taking shots that are a little difficult. She's missed an easy one. AZ's got to get more involved in our offense. Um, you know, we're waiting a little bit too long to kind of start our actions. So I think as, as we settle in, I think we'll get some stuff quicker. Thanks, Coach. Well, Gina Oriema is UConn Huskies with a decided home court advantage here in Bridgeport. You see that? That is just an 80-mile trek from Gamble Pavilion to Total Mortgage Arena. For NC State, a little bit longer. And you, know, you don't always see that with one and two seeds. We talked about it with Elisa Kinane the other day, Rebecca, and she said, hey, look, yeah, it's a little unfair, but no matter what, we got to go take care of business. 
Yeah, completely the right frame of mind. You talked about it at the top of the show when Wes Moore told you, you know, they can't touch us, pointing to the crowd that's going to be and is now in the arena. Sellout crowd over 10,000 here in Bridgeport. Paige Beckers getting a breather to begin the second quarter. So is Aaliyah Edwards. Westbrook and Nika Mule in for UConn. Jada Boyd and Diamond Johnson off the bench for NC State. Wolfpack in the Elite Eight for the first time since 1998. UConn here for a 16th straight time, and that's a big foul, Rebecca. That's going to be number two on Olivia Nelson Adota, who was so wonderful against Indiana in the Sweet 16, and now UConn will have to go to their bench and bring in Dorka Juhas. Olivia Nelson Adota leading at Connecticut in assists right now with four so far in this game. Can NC State take advantage? Boyd inside, seeking position, and travel. This is a small lineup for Connecticut. They've got Avina Westbrook playing the four position. That time, NC State trying to take advantage, lob the ball inside. Wes Moore said taking care of the basketball was the number one key in this game against UConn. Four turnovers thus far for the Wolfpack. Fudd gets some space, and cans it! What a gorgeous stroke for the freshman. And now with Nika Mule in the game, Connecticut extending their full court pressure. Nika Mule, the Big East Defensive Player of the Year. Johnson kicks. Boyd dishes. Crutchfield, who had 13 in the second half against Notre Dame. Kinane draws the double, great find. What a cut, Boyd alone for two. Connecticut spent a lot of time in their shoot around today on when to send the double team, and it never came from the opposite side of the floor, and NC State took advantage. And I think that's why Gino had his arms out like that. Here's Westbrook, giving it up. u highs the little crossover, and flips it in off the window. Gino Oriema. Talking with us earlier today said, Dorka Juhas could be very big for us tonight. And now, Nika Mule forcing the turnover off the inbound. That's what Nika Mule brings. She brings the fire, the energy, and the passion. And you see it here defensively. Deny, deny, forcing the turnover, and then the reaction. Her teammates feed off of it. The Big East Defensive Player of the Year. Westbrook gets some space, gives it up. Juhas, nope. Mule, offensive rebound, and flips it in. <laughs> Connecticut's lead is seven. They have a 7-0 advantage in second chance points. That was number two on Westmore's keys. Canane being guarded very physically by Williams. Boyd couldn't finish it. You've got to exhaust that if you're NC State. Kristen Williams was on Elisa Kinane. Right, no need for that shot yet. No. Westbrook gets free. Timeout, NC State. Nika Mule has come in and been a spark for the Connecticut Huskies. If you watch this, it's tough, it's physical. She gets the rebound, puts it back up. Doesn't matter that she hits the floor. I'm turning around, I'm locked in, ready to play defense. And Avina Westbrook says, I'm slashing to the rim. I got you, Nika. Way to get us going. We've got this. Coming up with the Degree Halftime Report, we will set the table for our final Elite Eight game of the tournament between Louisville and Michigan. But as for what you're seeing right now, UConn on a 6-0 run. Uh, turnovers and not executing efficiently for NC State. Things that you can't afford to do, they've allowed UConn to find energy in the paint. Well, UConn is doing it different ways, off of the dribble drive, off of back cuts, and off of offensive rebounds. you got to take something away. Yeah, you certainly don't want to let UConn do UConn things and let this lead get away from you. Let's get it back to Ryan.
All right, Al, well, a 13-game Elite Eight winning streak that UConn takes into this matchup with NC State. As Crutchfield just misses a three, U has the rebound. Wins versus 12 different teams in that 13-game streak. As Beckers checks back in for the Huskies, out there with Newell now as Williams misfires. Rebound loose, U has has it. And a foul, no, a held ball called as Crutchfield got in there. And UConn has the possession arrow as we check in with Holly. Well, Westmore, the NC State coach, in that last timeout said, we have got to start getting it inside more. Lisa Kune not been involved enough in this game. Doesn't have any, uh, it just has three points so far in this first half. He wants more inside touches. And they said, don't panic. You're getting shots, and if it's not there, kick it back out and work our offense. Stop panicking. Certainly feels like Connecticut's defense has been speeding up NC State in the quarter court. Johnson into the lane. Nice setup. Boyd got hit. And Jada Boyd will shoot two. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Final Four begins Saturday at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on TBS. For more information on game times, go to NCAA.com. Jakia Brown-Turner, certainly it's a special time of year for her, Holly. Right. Her boyfriend is actually on the Villanova squad. Many of you saw Justin Moore playing in that Elite Eight game for Villanova and tore his Achilles. He had successful surgery this morning at 6.30 a.m., according to his coach, Jay Wright. And I talked to Jakia about it today. She said, we've been together for about four years, met through basketball, and she said, I am out here playing for him tonight. He can't play in March Madness any longer. And it just gave me chills when she said that, I'm playing for him. Gives me chills, too. <laughs> really cool stuff and a speedy recovery. Beckers after picking up the personal. Mule, ball fake, penetrate, kick, FUD. No. Uas, another offensive rebound. She's going to the line. UConn's doing what they do on the offensive glass. As Uhas is down in pain. And UConn's going to send the training staff out to Dorka Uhas. See what happened here, Rebecca. Suhas falls and hard to tell there. Sort of awkward on her left arm, but maybe the left wrist? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Oh. could see the UConn players visibly shaken up after a gruesome injury to the left wrist of Dorka Juhas. So she will receive immediate medical attention and care. As even the NC State fans on their feet to show their regard for Dorka. Avina Westbrook had gone over to see Dorka and came away in tears as she went over towards her teammates. Clearly, all of them emotional and upset. It's not easy to see any of your teammates go down, especially at this time of year, but especially when the injury is as gruesome and obvious as that was. This 
is a Connecticut team that has all season long watched one teammate after another experience injury or illness and miss games. Gina Oriema has called it his most trying season coaching. Edwards coming in to shoot the free throws, misses both. UConn with 11 different starting lineups, eight different players miss multiple games. The reigning player of the year in the nation missed 19 and most regular season losses since 0405. Johnson can't hit, Brown Turner. Popped it up and off. Hobby, and it's a travel. Let's take a listen in to Gino Oriama talking about the difficulties of this season. And this year, I have to say, has been the hardest, most trying, most emotionally and physically exhausting season that I've ever experienced. No question about it. That's 37 years at the helm of UConn. It's pretty remarkable that I was there with that interview and was shocked hearing him say that just because of how much he has been through in the course of his career. Boyd running the floor and gets the whistle. Now Jada Boyd will shoot two. Now remember with Dorky Uhas going out with the injury, Lydia Nelson Adota has already picked up two fouls. So something to watch, UConn's post and one of the number one keys Gino Oriama mentioned to us was concerns with Elisa Kunane's ability to put fouls on UConn's bigs. And they do have a seldom used, but she has played in 13 games this season. Other post player, 6'5", Piaf Gabriel, but she is not with the team. She is back in stores on campus, I'm told, being take, doing academic things. So that is another blow to their post depth right now for the UConn Huskies. <laughs> See how the Huskies navigate this challenge. Boyd now four of four from the line. Fudd stops on a dime and pops it in. Hazy Fudd was just beaming with excitement when we met with her before the Sweet 16, said, this is everything I've dreamed of. She's tried to contain her excitement playing on this stage for this team. Boyd unable to hit to three. Westbrook finds the cutter. Beckers. UConn will settle it down. NC State, meanwhile, one of nine from three now. UConn just two for eight. And a whistle is going to go against Hobby. We'll step aside. Take a look at that last AZ Fudd basket because watch the change of speed. She turns on the Jets here, goes fast, and then lifts slow and drops it in. Beautiful move. Let's take a look at tonight's Achieving the Impossible, brought to you by Adidas. Reina Perez, yeah, she's got game-winning shots in her blood. 2021 ACC tourney against Louisville to give NC State the title. And then how about Saturday night? Down one, under 20 seconds to go. Comes up with a steal and the score to take a one-point deficit and turn it into a one-point lead and eventual win for NC State. It was an amazing road for Reina Perez. Not highly recruited at all. Started at Northern Arizona, then transferred to Cal State Fullerton, where she was the Big West Player of the Year in 2020. Finally came over to NC State, and last year, we can't tell you how many times Wes Moore told us, my goodness, this young woman is a blessing. Oh my goodness, she's a blessing. And her parents, Jeff and Veronica, here catching the action today. What an incredible road. And she has one of those personalities where she just lights up a room. Yeah, completely. And this is a kid when she was deciding to transfer, hadn't even heard of NC State. And her brother said, no, 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 they're pretty good. You, you <laughs> got to talk to NC State. And she's led them to some pretty impressive places. Fudd gets a look and pans it. AZ Fudd is lethal. Lisa Kunane back into the game. Look to get her a touch inside if you're NC State. Nine points for Fudd. Brown Turner looking for help. Finds it in Crutchfield. Brown Turner being ridden all the way in. Doesn't get the roll. 
So we'll go to the line to shoot two. One of the smoothest strokes in women's basketball right here. Coming off the stagger screen, just enough space. And look at that follow through, so pretty. You know, we were talking with AZ the other day as Kristen Williams, who's gotten off to a great start in this game, checks in for Avina Westbrook. Kayla Jones back in at Frenzy State. We were talking with Fudd about a relationship with Paige Beckers and playing together those two such close friends. Both the number one recruits, Paige last season, AZ this season. And she said, she's like a coach pest in my ear. And sometimes it can be really annoying in the moment, but it makes me better. That Paige is relentless with always getting on AZ, ways to improve, staying aggressive, trying to make sure her confidence stays up to shoot the basketball. That's important, right, for a great team. It can't just be the coach who is holding the players accountable. It has to be the teammates as well. But as the last five for UConn, Beckers will take those two. Ten-point UConn lead. NC State has scored just 22 thus far in his first half. And a whistle as Brown Turner goes down. Going under the screen, we saw NC State struggle going under the screen against Olivia Miles in the last round because of that pull up. And Becker is able to hit it. You see what they each did in their freshman campaigns. UConn over the limit. So Brown Turner hits the first. You know, if you look at the top offensive teams in the nation, only Iowa had a higher offensive rating than NC State. And yet here is this UConn defense having held NC State to 24 points thus far in this first half. And only 33% from the field. Duchamp, a little too strong. And NC State down just eight, a chance to creep a little closer here. Crutchfield accelerates, curls and finishes. What a move from Kyle Crutchfield. Great decision to push the pace and get in the paint. Six point game. Little push here from the Wolfpack. Nelson Adot is still on the bench with two fouls for UConn. Uhas has departed with a wrist injury. Beckers had it poked away, four to shoot, finds Ducharme. Underneath the rejection from Kayla Jones. What an athletic block. Kanane gets a touch. Out to Crutchfield. Little pitch and catch. Kanane finds the angle, mm, just blew the bunny. 12 to shoot. Time for NC State, Brown, Turner, no. Wow. Halfway down. You're not going to get much more open than that after the offensive board. Brown Turner's had some good looks as Williams answers on the other end. Again, hunting her shots. Williams with 11 points in his first half. Brown Turner now 0 for 3 from downtown. Crutchfield couldn't get that one to drop. An opportunity for UConn. Five on four. Beckers, a little too tall. NC State, when they're pushing pace, see him out in transition. Kai Crutchfield assessing the defense, sees the right side of the floor, cups and finishes. First turnover this quarter for UConn. Perez bounces inside. Kanane traveled. And Elisa Kanane is having a tough time right now against this UConn defense. But smart. Smart to attack Aliyah Edwards. She's got one foul. It's a bonus if you can pick up a second here in the first half against her. Kanane, second team All American a season ago. Projected to be. A top five pick in the WNBA draft. Williams doesn't get the roll. Canadian snares it. Wow. That is a really quick hell ball. That's called by Benny Luna. 
NC State has the possession arrow. And Wes Moore is understandably irate. Yeah, I, I thought that should have been an over the back call on Aaliyah Edwards. Brown Turner. Wow, what a move. Just couldn't finish it inside. Brown Turner now 0 for 5 from the floor. NC State's 2 for 11 in the second quarter. Beckers got it into Williams, rejected by Kanane. A couple beautiful blocks, the last couple of possessions by NC State on that left side. Two for one opportunity if NC State wants it. Kanane trying to go quickly, separates and finishes. A slight differential game in shot clock. This has been a nice response from NC State. Well, as much as it's felt like UConn's been in control this half, it's a six point game. And we've seen all season NC State extraordinarily resilient. Williams wiggling, taking, and can't hit. Jones the rebound. Will Jones get a look off? She does. That'll do it for the first half. Connecticut a six-point lead heading into halftime. NC State 6-3 and three this season when trailing at the half. A trip to the Final Four on the line. Kristen Williams with Holly. Well, Kristen, you came out in this game, and of the first nine points, you scored seven. How were you hunting your shots tonight? Coach is always on me about starting the game aggressive, and that's just my mentality this entire tournament. So I'm just trying to throw the first punch. You see your teammate Dorka go down with what looks to be a gruesome injury. How did your team kind of recollect themselves in that moment? I mean, that's always hard to see one of our teammates go down, but we just tried to regroup. And the biggest thing we can do for it right now is win the game. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Kristen Williams, the senior, showing up in a big way in this Elite Eight matchup. Helping guide UConn to a six-point halftime lead as we send it to L. Duncan in the studio. Thank you so much, Ryan Rucco. Degree halftime report. I am not alone in the studio, though. Joined, as always, by Monica McNutt and Nikki Fargus. Uh, all right, so we've got a six-point game at the half. By the way, NC State was down eight at the half against Notre Dame, came back. The fortitude that you've talked about. Uh -huh. They had talked about needing to have a fast start and urgency in order to combat what's happening in Bridgeport. What do you make of what you've seen from NC State? Let's just use the synonym, synonym pressure okay. for urgency. Pressure makes diamonds or pressure bursts pipes. And for most of that first half, probably until about the last four minutes of the second quarter, I didn't think that NC State was handling the pressure very well. Okay. They had gone away from Melissa Cunane. There was a single possession that I thought that they executed perfectly in terms of taking advantage of their player of the ACC candidate in terms of player of the year. And that one, she's going to make a read here. Or excuse me, it's actually not that one. She's got to finish some of these. She's got to be willing to be a little bit more physical. But that was the play. They allowed the double team to come. You cut, you move off of her. If you go to and through her, especially in the last four minutes of the second quarter, Nikki, she seemed like she was willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Aaliyah Edwards in terms of the physicality. She's got to step up, and they've got to look for her. And Aaliyah Edwards has done a great job, right? We talked about her ability to rebound the basketball and defend, and she's got a hard task in front of her. But on the offensive side of the basketball, what UConn has done a great job of is scoring in the paint. They've got 20 points in the paint, and they're doing it multiple ways. Look at the ball movement, the high-low action by the two bigs together. And then this play action here with the penetration to the lay-in. Again, dribble penetration. You got to keep your players in front of you. And here's Westbrook taking it to the hole again. If NC State can get back to playing and keeping people in front of them, and again, force those jumpers, force contested jumpers, not give them wide open jumpers. AZ Fudd is getting hot from the three point line. Obviously, be aware of Becker's all time. And conversely, I'm just always going to be the one. Make the bunnies. NC State five for yes. nine on layups. And, but that's right? a huge part of them yeah. being able to get back in defensive in position with confidence. Yes. You coming off of an offensive or defensive rebound, you're kind of behind the eight ball as opposed to if a shot is made. All right, everybody match up. We can set our defense. Okay, so a six point uh, deficit right now at the half. A very good game. Expecting. Another good game tonight as well, our night. All right, that game coming up at 9 p.m. Eastern, but before then, let's not count our chickens before they hatch. We've got a fantastic one brewing in the Bridgeport region. AZ Fudd and UConn up six right now over NC State, but we know how resilient the Wolfpack can be. Much more here from the studio on the other side. 
This halftime report is presented by Degree. It won't let you down. Welcome back to the Degree Halftime Report. All right, we're back with you in studio. Of course, we are waiting on who's going to be joining South Carolina and Minneapolis for the Final Four. They had a big win over Creighton yesterday. Fantastic run for Creighton, but eventually they were going to run up against Goliath, and David would not win yesterday. <laughs> this was a great game as well. Stanford, a five-point game down the stretch. Just an absolute team mentality. I got to tell you, the whole sisters are absolutely on one as they beat number two Texas to make their third Final Four in the last five seasons. You'll remember they won the title last season trying to, for the first time in program history, run it back to back as we take a look at those brackets. Uh, what's going to ask you about these brackets, guys? Which matchups are you most looking forward to once we know who's playing each other? Oh, man. Oh, man. Let's stick with the, the current game. <laughs> <laughs> the Who game do you want future? to see? Yeah, I'm not going to put you guys on the spot like that. No, um, yeah, we're I mean, they're all great. I mean, yeah. But, but we're feeling good about South Carolina, right? Yeah. Offensively, we're feeling great about Stanford as well. Okay. It seems like they're both bringing a ton of momentum into the Final Four right now. Definitely. Uh, Lexi Hall and Haley Jones were huge for Stanford, and obviously you can't say enough about Aaliyah Boston. On the other side. Yeah, De Destiny Henderson played well too. Yes, she did. Anything is possible. Kristen Williams leads the game with 11 points. We've got second half action from Bridgeport on the other side. This has been the Degree Halftime Report. This halftime report is presented by Degree. It won't let you down. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Two seed UConn, a 34-28 lead over one seed NC State. As we get ready to start the third quarter, a trip to the Final Four is on the line. Winner of this game will meet Stanford in Minneapolis. Meanwhile, South Carolina awaits the winner of Louisville, Michigan. That game following this one on ESPN as we welcome you back. Courtside Ryan Ruko alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo here with Andrea Carter and Holly Rowe as well. Andrea, it was quite the first half for Kristen Williams. Absolutely, Ryan. I mean, part of UConn's lead is hugely attributed to the play of Kristen Williams and her ability to hunt her shot. Look, she feels the defense of Raina Perez, doesn't throw her elbow, uses a step back to create space. And every time she catches the basketball, look how hard she uses that jab step to attack, but then reads the defense, feels enough space Face to knock down the shot was really impressed by her aggression the only player in double figures from either team NC State in that first half only one for ten from three-point range they had some good looks remember this is a Wolfpack team that was 11th in the country in three-point field goal percentage on the season shooting 37 percent Ryan will they regress to the mean that's right that's always the question with these things let's take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Geico Williams with nine in the first. The points of the paint, a significant difference. UConn, a plus 10. And an NC State offense that was second in the nation in offensive rating, held to 33% shooting from the floor, seven turnovers. But with all that being said, NC State is down just six and they have a propensity to come back in games. And we've seen them come back from large deficits late in fourth quarters. We saw that against Louisville in the regular season. We saw them come back yesterday or the other day against Notre Dame. You see NC State still in their man-to-man. -man. In the game last night, Stanford and Texas. Stanford, as you see Kristen Williams, or Aaliyah Edwards pick up another foul. That'll be her second. Remember, two on Nelson Adota, and Dorka Juhasz has left this game with an injury. Stanford played the first zone of the season, and it threw Texas off. NC State barely plays, played zone in the regular season. Would not be shocked to see them throw some in here in the third quarter. UConn started 16-0 against Notre Dame in the third in their Sweet 16 matchup against Indiana, rather, as Brown Turner misses the three. Nelson Adota lost the handle. In transition, Brown Turner trying to win the race to the cup. She does on a gorgeous downcourt feed from Kayla Jones. It's a four-point game. NC State is so tough on the defensive end of the floor, and you see how important it can be. Force the turnover, and then you get the easy two. 
UConn led this game 30 to 20 at one point. Williams, no. That's going to be a foul on Kanane. That will be her first. We've not seen NC State get too many easy looks. And one way you can is by getting the turnover and then running out. Brown Turner finishing the easy ones. In the corner, Fudd, not that time. Kanane couldn't control it. Edwards on the floor with it, and it's going to be NC State basketball. The way these teams are going after the loose ball, so you know there's a lot on the line. Make sure they get that proper wet spot. Is that like a giant Swiffer or just a mop? Yeah, it's it's more Swiffery than moppy, isn't it? It is. Brown Turner given space from Williams. She had been 0 for 6 from the floor before that layup. Kanane one on one, attacking, winning, plus the foul. It's a two-point game. Mom's fired up. And that is number three on Aaliyah Edwards. You know, Elisa Kanane wants to go back towards the baseline. And she baits with the ball fake and then gets the and one. The more she is involved getting touches on the block for NC State, the better for them. And completes the three-point play. Mom likes what she sees. It is a one-point game. This entire crowd is on its feet still. Beckers hits the jumper. And now the UConn fans will sit. Finally getting that first Huskies bucket to allow them to do so. Meanwhile, the NC State fans are still Standing. Perez with space, airmailed it. And NC State still waiting to find the stroke from deep. They're one for 12. Beckers sending away Nelson and Dota. Edwards trying to find an angle, too strong. Loose ball, Jones wins it for the Wolfpack. Kayla Jones, a little high step, and throws it to her bench. I like the attack, and she drew four defenders. She just needed to be more patient when she was finding her player out on the perimeter. She was going to be wide open because she had four around her. Eight turnovers now for NC State. Wolfpack in their first Elite Eight since 1998. Meanwhile, UConn in its 16th straight Elite Eight. Williams. Finds a crease, got rejected, keeps it alive. Eight to shoot. Fudd separates, can't hit. Nelson Adota on the offensive glass. Couldn't get it to go. Here comes Crutchfield. Kanane and Nelson Adota went down. Crutchfield gets rejected by Beckers. Beckers, pull up jumper, he's good. Such a great job by Paige Beckers to wait and make sure Olivia Nelson Adota was stationary so she didn't pick up the foul on a moving screen. That's important for the guards to do. Perez wheels it back out. Nearly thrown away again. Brown Turner was able to collect it. Brown Turner travel. And another NC State turnover. NC State out in transition. Paige Beckers is long, does a great job. And here, wait, wait for your big to be stationary so you don't get the foul. Then it's time to look for your shot. Beckers now with eight points. She's four of eight from the floor. Coming off. 33 minutes, her most since returning from injury. Remember, missed 19 games, having surgery in the middle of this season. A knee and leg injury. 
Fudd backs it out. Five to shoot. Edwards will short. And a whistle going the other way. That's going to be number three on Nelson Adota. So now three on Nelson Adota, three on Edwards, and no Dorka Juhans. The bigs for both teams understand how important it is to get to the offensive glass. So they are attacking, they are boxing out. This was one of the primary concerns for Gino Oriyama. Was that, his bigs getting into foul trouble? And that was before he knew he wasn't going to have Dorka Juhas. Kayla Jones can't hit the three. You know, the shot looks unorthodox, but Jones actually shot it at 41% from three this season. So if you're watching her for the first time and you're thinking, well, why is she taking the, that obviously is not fluid form. No, she's usually a good three-point shooter. As Nelson Adona will check out. And now UConn goes small here, Rebecca, with Westbrook in. Sometimes that can be a benefit for them on the offensive end of the floor. An additional three-point shooter. And Avina Westbrook can battle defensively. Beckers stops on a dime. Was stripped by Kanane. Westbrook. No, let's get an injury update from Holly. Dorka Juhas has what they're calling a wrist injury now. They'll give us more details at the end of the game, but from what I observed, this does appear to be some sort of fracture. Does not look like she will be able to return, guys. All right, Holly, it was a gruesome injury. Couldn't quite tell on the first glance, but then you could, and it was not easy to look at. Westbrook, another look from three, rims off. Westbrook very confident, Gino Oriyama telling us how much he trusts her on this kind of stage. Kanane, a little too ambitious. Nice play from Westbrook. Fudd attacks the closeout and reverses it in. Eleven for the freshman Fudd. Two possessions ago, Kayla Jones had the post, and she was able to score over Westbrook. But man, Westbrook battled the last time down. Brown Turner, finally! Had been 0 for 4 from three-point range. 3 of 18 in the NCAA tournament before hitting that one from deep. Was 0 for 3 in the Sweet 16. Oh, what a rejection from Crutchfield. Perez down the floor. Crutchfield blew the layup. Would have tied the game. Beckers leaning and hitting a big bucket for UConn. What a tough shot. It looked like she lost the handle and gathered quickly anyway. Great pace in this third quarter now. Four-point game. Brown Turner, not that time. Beckers, a little bit too tall for Williams, who topples into the cheerleaders. What a great Elite Eight contest we have in Bridgeport tonight. Will it be a 14th straight Final Four for UConn? Or the first since 1998 for NC State? Taking a look at our championship bracket, South Carolina and Stanford, they've already punched their tickets to the Final Four. Who will join them? Haley Van Lid from Louisville going to take on Nas Hillman in Michigan following the conclusion of UConn NC State. Big time matchup, Michigan in its first Elite Eight. Louisville trying to get to the Final Four with Van Lip leading the way. What's at stake here? Well, UConn could be headed to a 14th straight Final Four. NC State would go to just their second in school history and their first since 1998 when they beat UConn in the Elite Eight. These teams meeting for the first time since 2007. And a whistle, who's that gonna be on? I think AZ Fudd. Yeah. She's bumping the cutter. It looked like NC State was trying to get Jakea Brown-Turner to post up. 
He's second on FUD, fourth team foul on UConn. Nelson and Dota and Edwards both have three. Dorka Juhas will not return, suffering a wrist injury. Diamond Johnson into the game for NC State. She's been quiet thus far. Westmore likes to say she doesn't provide a spark off the bench, but a ball of fire. One of the best reserves in the nation. Shot clock down to three. Perez trying to create. Step back is short. And a shot clock violation from NC State, who has cut the deficit to one, three, and two at different moments of this quarter, but not been able to get over the hump. Fudd, Williams, Beckers, all in double figures. Page three for three from the floor in this third quarter. Beckers posting up the diminutive Diamond Johnson. Here's Nelson Adota. Working Kanae, Nelson Adona reverses it in. The senior with four points, five rebounds, four assists. Perez hesitates, kicks. Boyd banks it in. Difficult finish, and Boyd able to. Williams. Sets up Westbrook, off on a three. Avino Westbrook, now 0 for 3 from downtown. Neither team has shot it well from deep. Boy, short. But she had a great size mismatch with Kristen Williams on her, posting up as Connecticut continues to be in their smaller lineup. Deckers around the hedge. Fudd, given too much space. Airmailed the three. Brown Turner with pace, two for one opportunity for NC State. Physicality between Westbrook and Boyd. Here's Johnson. Will fire and take. Look out if she gets going. She can be a game changer because of her ability to do that, her quickness, step back, get her shots off, drain it. UConn can hold for a final shot here at the end of the third quarter of this Elite Eight matchup in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Knocked away by Boyd, three seconds left in the frame. Dorka Juhas out on the bench now, that left wrist wrapped. Page lobs, Nelson Adoda left it short. One point game. Headed to the fourth. Diamond Johnson with the shifty step back to make it a one point deficit. And we will talk with NC State head coach Wes Moore coming up next. Fourth quarter, someone's going to the final four tonight. Welcome back to Bridgeport here with NC State coach Wes Moore. And coach, I've heard you say we've got to get inside touches, but UConn's making it awfully tough. Yeah, How can you be more effective there? Yeah, we're just offensively right now. We're out of whack. Give them credit. They're really playing tough, physical, and we're just not handling it real well. we got to settle down a little bit. I told them we get to this fourth quarter, we're going to be okay. we got a lot of veterans on this team, but we got to settle down and do what we do, spread the floor out, look to attack, Look to get touches. Coach, on defense, they've started to hit some outside shots. Do you change anything there? Yeah, we changed a little bit how we're playing Becker's pick on the ball now. Try to get up there and get our post a little more active with that. It means we got to rotate or we're going to leave somebody open. Thank you, Coach. Uh, thanks, Holly. All right, thanks a lot, Holly. Time to take a look at our thrilling drives from tonight's game brought to you by Nissan. Drea? Well, the thrilling drives are going to go to NC State, just getting into the paint. Jada Boyd making a great cut off the double team. Kai Crutchfield with the attack and the strong fillet in the paint. And then the shiftiness by Diamond Johnson. They are driving this comeback so far, Ryan. Down 10 in the second. 
They start the fourth down just one. Ryan Rucco, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe, Andrea Carter, our entire ESPN crew. Appreciate you hanging out with us this Monday night. Louisville, Michigan will follow this game with one more trip to the Final Four on the line following the conclusion of this one. Who's it going to be, UConn or NC State? Huskies basketball leading by one. Fudd, the freshman, working with Nelson Adota. Williams dumps it down. Nelson Adota, Johnson perfectly timed the dig. As soon as Nelson Adota turned her head and could no longer see Johnson, that's when Johnson went perfect. Seven turnover for UConn. That pass grabbed by Boyd, and NC State has its first lead since 2 0. It worked to start the game, it works to start the fourth quarter. Exact same play. NC State, the much more veteran team, as Fudd says, That's okay. This jumper doesn't need experience. Thirteen for the number one recruit in the nation. South Carolina and Stanford have already punched their tickets to the Final Four. And how about this? Going to have number four on Nelson Adota. You see Diamond Johnson perfectly. As soon as Nelson Adota turned her head and started dribbling, she went in and got it. And this is how NC State started the game. And this is how they started the fourth quarter. Over the top, back cut. That was a little answer by the freshman, though. They are going to leave Nelson Adota on the floor with four fouls as Boyd gets free for another layup. Remember, Edwards has three, and Dorka Juhas out with an injured wrist. Suffered in the first half. Williams, too strong, can aim the rebound. We talked about NC State struggling from three. Connecticut is struggling from three as well, except for AZ Fudd. Johnson again! When she gets hot, it can be quite the burner. Diamond Johnson making a difference. We've seen it all season long. Hot off the bench. Bench hot too. NC State with its largest lead of the game. It is four with 8.13 to go in the fourth quarter, Drea. Well, that last transition three by Diamond Johnson is a miscue in transition as far as defense goes. Aaliyah Edwards has to come here so that Kristen Williams can release, but it doesn't get there fast enough. There's not enough energy in transition, so Kristen Williams is slow. Aaliyah Edwards tries to recover. The post player has to sprint down to release the guard. Kristen Williams can't leave until the post gets there. Kristen Williams not on point defensively, but NC State's been on point defensively all second half. Holly? Well, Drea, to your point, Gino Oriama just told his huddle, not one of you in this game right now looks like you're interested in winning. I've told you five times that defensive action, and not one of you is actually doing it. He challenged his team right now to start paying attention to the details better, and they're going to start picking up a little more full court pressure. NC State on a 12-2 run, huh? Four-point lead. Williams hops in, got a whistle against Brown Turner, who has done a wonderful job defensively tonight. Jakea, Kristen Williams, when Jakea Brown Turner is defending her, 0 for 9. Any other defender, 5 for 6. You see the double-digit comebacks this season from Westmore's team. Try and have it happen a fourth time tonight. Williams thought she was getting free throws. She was not. Westbrook will fire and hit. On the long two, Connecticut has missed 10 straight threes. By the way, Paige Becker's out, Nika Mule in for UConn. This was a lineup that worked well in the first half in terms of extending pressure against NC State. Brown Turner pirouetting into a bunny. Said she's playing for her injured boyfriend, Justin Moore. 
Hurt and Villanova's Elite Eight win. Well, she is doing it proud tonight. Fudd, too strong. Rebound. Whacked back. William. She got it! Credit, AZ Fudd. Energy, tap it back. Ends a string of 10 straight missed threes from Connecticut. One point game. Coming on six and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. A trip to the final four is on the line. Perez throws it into Muir on the steal. Williams ahead of the field. And a foul called on Westbrook. Energy right now, tons of it by Connecticut. AZ Fudd gets in there, can't corral, taps it back. Kristen Williams all the time she needs. And Nika Mule, Defensive Player of the Year in the Big East Conference. Getting an easy two for Kristen Williams. Perez bounces in. Brown Turner with UConn up one. Brown Turner couldn't find an angle but gets a whistle. That is a tough call against Kristen Williams. That'll be her first, the third team foul against UConn. Free throws here for Brown Turner. NC State's bigs have picked on Kristen Williams, posting up inside. That should have been a no call. Brown Turner hits the free throw. How about NC State in this game from the line? They are 11 for 11. Meanwhile, UConn is one for five. Brown Turner got them both. NC State back in front. Mule, Westbrook, Fudd, Nelson Adota, and Williams the five for Connecticut. Johnson, Perez, Kanane, Boyd, and Brown Turner for NC State. Is Brown Turner Came over for the rejection, last hit her, and it'll stay with Connecticut. Hustle play. Mika Mule saved the possession for Connecticut. Mule will inbound. Robbing it out to Westbrook. Becker's getting ready to check back in for Connecticut. Westbrook gives it up, 10 to shoot. Williams burrows in. Williams too strong, knocked out of bounds by Nelson Adota. Hey, the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One continues next weekend. Final Four special Friday, April 1st at 6 Eastern on ESPN. And the Final Four Friday night, 7 and 9.30 Eastern on ESPN. All access Saturday on ESPN+. Plus. And then Sunday, we've got a championship game as Boyd gets touched by Williams. And Jada Boyd is going to shoot two. Gino Oriama seeing a lot of whistles on this end the last few possessions. NC State's done a terrific job of getting the ball into the low block, and it hasn't been to Kinane. It's because Connecticut had the small lineup. Now Gino Oriama going back with Aaliyah Edwards. Has to go big because NC State was able to take advantage of that inside. Now that was the second on Williams, but the fourth team foul on Connecticut. So NC State's going to shoot the rest of the way as they miss their first free throw of the night. Boyd had been 4-4. Four four. There aren't going to be many fingernails left at the end of this one. <laughs> Boyd hits the second. What a contest between the one seed NC State, the two seed UConn. Boyd has 13 off the bench tonight for the Wolfpack. Player Westmore calls RX Factor. Wow. That is going to be a foul against Crutchfield, who just knocked down Ali Edwards. Second team foul against NC State, second on Kai Crutchfield. Edwards being really good about not moving her feet, not being too wide, and Crutchfield trying to fight through the screen. Crutchfield at 13 points and three steals in the second half. 
of NC State's scintillating Sweet 16 win over Notre Dame. Big playmaker. Becker's back in. Under five to go in the fourth. Two-point NC State lead. Fudd, seven to shoot. Fudd sees a seam and lays it in. Right again. 15 for the freshman Fudd. Boyd gives it up. Penane working with Nelson Adota, who has four fouls. Penane lays it in. It's been quite a battle in the post. Great job by Penane there to continue to work the entire possession. She's picked it up after a slow start. Johnson dove in and fouled Beckers. We'll have a timeout. 4-12 to go in the fourth quarter of this Elite Eight matchup. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? State trying to pull off a comeback again after Reina Perez's heroics at the end of the Sweet 16. They've outscored UConn 29 21 in the second half. UConn does not have an assist, and they have not lost before the Final Four since 2007. This is a Connecticut team that averages 18 assists a game. When they're really flowing, their offense is pretty and they're passing and cutting. NC State's been disruptive with that, with their defense. Starting five, back on the floor for UConn. The four for 12 in the paint in the second half after they were 10 for 13 in the first half. Five to shoot. Edwards trying to create, hops in and finishes. It is tied again. Crutchfield trying to shake Fudd. 57 all. Perez on the bench, Johnson in operating the point for NC State. Kanane will fire, no. Rebound, out of bounds, last touched UConn. It'll stay with NC State. Another unassisted basket, great defense by NC State. A player just has to make a play and Edwards does so. Johnson into Kanane. Double comes, make it a triple. Penane throws it away. Fudd on the steal. Thirteen turnovers now from NC State. UConn a chance to reclaim the lead. Fudd gets some space. And hits! This customer. Mom and dad know it well. Crutchfield had some space, didn't take. Kanane redirects. Two point UConn lead. Johnson through the lane, flips it in. What a move from Diamond Johnson. Which players are going to play great and lead their team to the Final Four? Fifty-nine all. Beckers gives it up. Ten to shoot. Back to Beckers. Leaning jumper is money. Here is Johnson, not afraid of the moment. Johnson can't finish it. Got all the way to the cup, just a tad too strong. 
And now NC State needs a stop. Timeout, Connecticut. Range jumper. Gino Oriema said that's a player he trusted to make big plays, and we know Wes Moore trusts Diamond Johnson. The other player, Gino Oriema said he knows rises in big moments. Paige Beckers. Take a look at the reset. UConn without a foul to give. NC State has one. Wolf Pack, three timeouts remaining. UConn with two. It's Connecticut basketball leading by two, Holly. Well, guys, plenty of time left, but a big basket from Paige Beckers. Consider this, the final four in Minneapolis, where she is a folk hero in that state. From St. Louis Park, Minnesota, what a big, huge homecoming that would be if Paige was able to get her team there. Coach says she's built for this moment, but with 137 left, she's got a very experienced, cohesive NC State team in her path. And they have proven they can handle these tight, late situations the Wolfpack have. Reina Perez getting ready to check back in for NC State. NC State has the possession arrow. UConn has the actual possession. Now we saw NC State late in the game against Notre Dame make it very difficult for the Fighting Irish to get the ball in bounds from the sidelines. That's got to be goal number one here for Connecticut. Fudd with 17, or most in tourney play. Williams has 16. Becker is an efficient 12 on 6 of 10 shooting. Nelson Adoda and Edwards, the two bigs out there. NC State with Johnson, Crutchfield, Brown, Turner, Kanane, and Jones. Perez remains on the bench at the moment for NC State. She had rushed to the scores table and then come back to the bench. UConn's made four straight field goals. Five to shoot. Beckers looking for daylight. Two to shoot. Edwards doesn't realize it, and Connecticut turns it over on the shot clock violation. And you could see Gina Mariama saying, Paige, you got to shoot that. Yeah, and when she came off the dribble, she that was her shot to take. Johnson controlling the point. NC State down two. Kanane gets the catch. Kanane for the tie. She has it. Just because you know she wants to go over that baseline shoulder doesn't mean you can stop it from happening. Tied at 61. Under 50 seconds to go. A trip to the final four on the line. Someone's about to make a memory. Beckers. Into Fudd. Edwards burrowing in, can't finish it. Nelson Adona rejected another chance and a foul. Nelson Adona will shoot two. A 69% free throw shooter with a chance to give Connecticut the lead. First free throws this half for Connecticut. Interestingly, Connecticut could have gone a little quicker if they wanted a two-for-one in a tie game. They did not, but Nelson Adota at the line misses the first. Number one for NC State is to box out and secure the rebound if it's a miss. Second free throw, no good. Rebound Jones, and NC State can hold for a final shot to try and send the Wolf back to the Final Four. Connecticut one for seven from the free throw line. And the senior Nelson Adota misses both in a tie game. Sixty-one all, two timeouts remaining, no fouls to give. Possession arrow belongs to NC State. Rebecca, 26.6 to go. Shot clock turned off for the Wolfpack. Yeah, number one priority. You have to take the last shot. You would expect the ball to be in Diamond Johnson's hand. She is the quickest player on the floor. She'll get a breakdown and can find an open teammate or look for herself. But number one priority, take the last shot. Nerve. 
Gives a plenty for both fan bases. NC State has not been to the Final Four since 1998 when they beat UConn. Gino Oriema's team seeking a 14th straight trip. Crutchfield to inbound. Jones, Brown Turner, Kanane, and Johnson for NC State. Jones being pressured. Here is Johnson. Johnson going to let that clock wind. A trip to Minneapolis is on the line here. 12 seconds left. Johnson with 10. Kanane up high. Johnson with six, with five. Johnson makes her move, looking for space. Crutchfield, no! And we have overtime. Number one priority, you don't lose the ball game. And as long as you make sure you take the last shot, you don't lose the ball game. Connecticut switches, Aaliyah Edwards, a player who can do that. Crutchfield, such a tough look. That was e excellent defense by the Connecticut Huskies. And so we head to overtime. NC State, one and one in OT this season. This will be Connecticut's first overtime game of the season. What a dramatic fourth quarter and the reaction from Westmore after the Crutchfield miss. And the relief from Gino Oriema. five all time in NCAA tournament overtime games. Last happened in the final four 2018 against Notre Dame. Remember Gino Oriema told us earlier today, these kind of days make you feel nauseous, even more so now when he knows there's only but so many more in front of him. He gets five extra minutes of nauseous. <laughs> Westmore will say goodbye to four members of his starting five when this NC State run is over, a group that has been historic for this program. Had their first ACC tournament championship in three decades. Had their first regular season ACC title in three decades, all achieved over the last few seasons. This year, for the first time, won the regular season and the tournament since 1984-85. Trying to get back to the Final Four for the first time since 1998. Meanwhile, UConn trying to keep the streak alive. Keep in mind, Olivia Nelson Adoto with four fouls. Leah Edwards with three fouls. NC State was really able to take advantage when Connecticut went with a smaller lineup. And Dorka Uhas, the other big that UConn, for us, is out with a wrist injury suffered in the first half. Kanane and Nelson Adota will jump it up. And Perez back in there for NC State. Controls it. So Johnson on the bench, Perez back in for Westmore. Brown Turner finds Kanane. Kanane squeezes it in. That's a tough finish for one of the best bigs in the nation. How many times have we seen her able to finish on that right block when she's guarded well? Now remember, both teams are in the bonus. It does not reset at the start of overtime. So both teams shooting free throws. Nelson Adota on a gorgeous delivery and a chance for three. Connecticut with zero assists in the second half. Gets a beautiful delivery as Nelson Adota cuts to the basket. Fudd finds her opportunity for an and one. Third foul on Kayla Jones. Nelson Adota who missed two at the end of regulation. Misses another here. UConn is one for eight from the line. 
If they don't win, that's going to be the thing Gino Auriemma can't sleep about. Perez unable to hit from three. About one minute into this overtime period. About 90% of this crowd on its feet. Beckers swooping through. Gets the whistle. And Paige Beckers is going to go to the line. She's 0 for 1 tonight. She has struggled from the line in the NCAA tournament. Just 68% on the season in limited action. Palms in the building. Beckers hits the first. Had been one for four in the tournament from the line. Mom, a big smile of relief. UConn now two for nine. NC State, meanwhile, 13 for 14 from the stripe. Two big ones from Beckers, the reigning national player of the year. Connecticut a two-point lead. Jones facing up, gives it up. Plenty of time to operate. Brown Turner trying to find an angle and does for two. Julia Brown Turner has been terrific off the bounds and in the paint this entire game. And that gentleman in the middle of the crowd, the white polo, he wanted a foul too. <laughs> 65 all. What a game it's been in Bridgeport. Williams short. Edwards the offensive rebound. Connecticut was menacing on the offensive glass early in this game. NC State then calmed things down in the second half. Gino Oriama frantically yelling out a play. Shot clock at four. Beckers, you bet! She may not be fully healed, but she's fully clutch. Great job by NC State. Connecticut's defense was in frantic mode and they could not get out there in time. Over 60% from three in Crutchfield's NCAA career. This is her 13th tournament game. Beckers again! Connecticut back in front by one. Connecticut in a zone. Kanane, we're going to take Edwards, meets a double. What a pass to Jones as she was falling. Brilliant vision, and NC State back in front. On that right block, making the right play the right time. Decision time after time. I'm guessing Beckers might want to look again. And that is going to be a foul on Kanane, and that's not a wise one from Kanane because Connecticut's in the bonus, so Becker's going right back to the line. Paige Becker's with the mid-range pull up, able to get it to drop, and then beautifully done here. Kanane, as she's falling, delivers the ball for the easy two. Two free throws for Becker's. Cash. Becker's has the last seven UConn points. Mom can hardly stand it. This one to give Connecticut the lead. Oh, yeah. Eight straight Husky points from the sophomore star, Paige Beckers. NC State down one with the ball. Crutchfield, not that time. Rebound Fudd, tie up. Possession arrow belongs to UConn. One ten to go in overtime. A trip to the Final Four and a meeting with Stanford in Minneapolis is on the line. 
A sold out crowd in Bridgeport on its feet. Beckers has the last eight for UConn. Under a minute to go. Here's Fudd. Under 10 to shoot. Fudd carving, dishing, Edwards finishing. <laughs> NC State has three timeouts. Will they take one? They will. Paige Beckers and AZ Fudd have made the right decisions down the stretch. Great dribble penetration. The defense has to come over. Aaliyah Edwards, hands ready. An easy two. Coach Oriam loving it. Bounce, bounce. Turn. 73-70. UConn in front of NC State. Three timeouts remaining for Connecticut. Two now for NC State. No fouls to give, and the possession arrow belongs to the Wolfpack. 39.9 to go in overtime. Paige Beckers has been absolutely sensational here in this extra period. And her 20 points most since December 5th, 2021, before the injury. Fudd has 17 tonight. Impressive performance from the freshman. Let's take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. How about Beckers down the stretch? She's been absolutely clutch, and she's got the clutch gene. And you mentioned it earlier, Ryan, even though she's not 100% healthy, she's been 100% clutch coming off the screen, finding her spot where she can deliver over and over again. NC State basketball here, Rebecca, down three. I'd look for them to attack the basket, try to get touches in the paint. Maybe you get a foul call. They've been outstanding, making their free throws today. And if they have to, they can play the foul game as long as it's not putting Paige Beckers at the free throw line. So you don't need the three-point shot here. I would look for them to attack the rim. You having fun? <laughs> what a blast. We hope you're having fun. What a game here in Bridgeport. How about for NC State? The decision, do you go Diamond Johnson or do you go Reina Perez? I think you're going to go Diamond Johnson. She was the one who can really break you down off the glass. However, Reina Perez and her clutch steals, not only in their last game, but we've seen her do it throughout. Michigan Louisville will start at 14 after the hour on ESPNU, and then we will get you there as soon as this one goes final. 39.9 to go in overtime. Connecticut a three-point lead. Winner will face Stanford Friday night. South Carolina awaits the winner of Louisville, Michigan. We are going to have a powerhouse Final Four on ESPN, regardless of the results tonight. Long time here for each team to huddle. Neither team has led by more than four at any point in the fourth quarter and overtime. Nip and tuck. Perez on the floor, Johnson on the bench. You might also hear get a direct entry right into Kinane in the post. Nelson Adota guarding her with four fouls. Here's Perez. NC State down three. Crutchfield pops open, bounces in. Jones taking a lot of time here, trying to find a seam. She does, lays it in. Looked like there might have been contact as well. No foul call. It's a one-point game. And now Connecticut will take a timeout. They'll have two remaining following this one. Big bucket there from NC State. One point game. Connecticut basketball with the lead. Westmore frustrated. He thought there should have been an and one here. Nice job taking the ball to the basket. There was certainly enough contact to call a foul here on Olivia Nelson Adota. And it would have been her fifth. 
What a great finish. The ability to do so through contact. Yes, that should have been an and one. Clearly hit on the wrist there. And a missed call would have been an and one and a free throw opportunity to tie the game for Jones, a 74% free throw shooter. It also would have meant the end of Nelson Adota's night. Instead, Connecticut basketball. And Rebecca, all right, here's the situation. NC State was in the exact situation they were against Notre Dame. The only difference is against Notre Dame, they had fouls to give. Here they don't. So maybe that affects the aggression a little, but we've seen them really put pressure on opposing ball handlers. Be as aggressive as possible here. Try to get a steal. If you don't, it's fine to get the foul. You just don't want to foul Paige Becker. That's right, shot clock's turned off. Oh, wow. Foul called right away before the inbound is going to be on Perez. Let's see. So is she fouling AZ Fudd? Because if so, that's, that's another player you don't want to put to the free throw line. However, no time off the clock. Right. But I'm guessing NC State would have rather had a chance at a turnover first. Yes, yes. Instead, the foul called before the inbound, which is allowed. Fudd hits the free throw. The freshman, calm and collected. She was 20 for 22 from the line during the regular season. Mom and dad watching anxiously. Fudd has them both. Never a doubt. Lead is back to three. Still plenty of time to go for a two. And after not hitting free throws all night, Beckers and Fudd have hit them for UConn down the stretch. Connecticut's had the right people at the line late. Amen. Louisville, Michigan starting on ESPNU. Winner of that game goes on to face South Carolina in the final four. We will get to that game as soon as this overtime contest goes final. Connecticut six for its last six from the line after starting one for eight. Again, maybe a direct entry right from the inbounder to Elisa Kinane in the post, or get it into a player who can drive to the basket. Maybe this time you do get the and one call. Still a lot of time left to operate here. NC State. Trailing by three. Here's Perez. Over to Brown Turner. Guarded by Fudd. Brown Turner to the corner. Crutchfield got fouled. She got fouled shooting three. And Kai Crutchfield will have a chance to tie this game at the line. Great play. America's play. Drive the left side. Hammer screen on the other side. Aaliyah Edwards contests a little too closely. Coach Oriam, I can't believe it. And Edwards is saying, no, I didn't, but yes, she did. Crutchfield, 83% from the line on the season, 75% in her collegiate career. Got the first. Connecticut still with two timeouts remaining. Crutchfield misses the second. I always say this. The number one thing Connecticut has to do here is box out and corral if it's a miss. And plenty of time, obviously, still go ahead and make this if you're Crutchfield. She does. One point game. Connecticut ball, and Gina Oriema will take a timeout. With so few ticks going off the clock. 21.5 to go in overtime. UConn 75, NC State 74. One timeout remaining for each team. Possession arrow belongs to NC State. UConn the one point lead. The Connecticut women are just 
incredible. Look at this, 16 straight Elite Eight appearances. By far and away, the longest streak in the history of college basketball, men's or women's. And trying to make their 14th straight Final Four. They're having to earn it tonight against NC State. In order to do so, they're going to have to have a clean inbound. And unlike the last possession defensively for NC State, they don't want to foul before the ball comes in. They want to give their defense at least a couple of clicks to try to get a steal or force a turnover. Beckers gets it into Fudd. You'd rather not put Fudd on the line unless you have to, and they might. Fudd evades Kanane. Harassed by Perez. Fudd throws it to Edwards, and a timeout taken by Gino Oriema. A lot of time went off the clock. And just before NC State was going to foul who they'd want to, Aliyah Edwards, a timeout taken by Gino. The final timeout for Connecticut. Of course, this is what Connecticut wants. The more ticks to go off the clock, the better. But NC State had them in pretty good possession, position here. Easy Fudd able to get it out. Gino Oriama not liking what he's seeing. But Perez <laughs> looking to be the hero again. Timeout, timeout. <laughs> Got it off in time. All right, Rebecca. Can Reyna Perez do it one more time? Stole it off the dribble. Led to a go-ahead layup in the final seconds against Notre Dame. 10.9 to go, UConn inbounding. Edwards gets it back to Beckers. NC State has to foul, and they do with 6.2 to go in overtime. And that whole sequence took a lot of time to just end up with Paige Beckers at the line if you're NC State. But there's still stick point two to go. And you can time out in advance. There's still plenty of time. NC State with one timeout remaining. Beckers at the line. Silky. Mom has had a wide smile all over time. Beckers, got them both. Six straight made free throws for Paige Beckers down the stretch. And a three-point UConn lead. NC State takes its final timeout. They will advance the basketball with 6.2 to go in overtime. Now they're going to need a three. Now they need a three. And the last few times when they've been inbounding, they've been looking for Kai Crutchfield to be the player to get that three. The first time they set an elevator screen for her to get the ball. The last time it was a hammer screen on the opposite side of the floor for her to get it when she got fouled. Look for her to be the one to get the touch. Deckers now with 10 in overtime, 22 for the game, playing 40 minutes by far and away the most since returning from surgery. UConn on the brink of advancing to its 14th straight Sweet Six, 14th straight Final Four. Six point two to go in overtime. Now here's the question, Rebecca. Does UConn foul here leading by three? I think you certainly consider it. You certainly consider it. it has to be with the NC State players back to the basket or with them dribbling, because you certainly cannot foul and give them a chance to go up in the motion, but yes, you consider it. NC State, five for 20 from three. They were outstanding throughout the regular season. Diamond Johnson, a good three-point shooter, remains on the bench. Brown turned it inbound, NC State. Down three, 6.2 to go in overtime. Here's Perez, four seconds left. Perez floats it, Brown Turner for the tie. Got it to go with point three remaining. Brown Turner ties it at 77. My goodness, what a contest. Connecticut does not have a timeout remaining. They spent that final one when Fudd and Edwards were trapped. 
The official's just confirming the three here. That's the stoppage. 6.1 is a lot of time. Flare screen by Kinane. Well contested by Beckers. Look at the reaction. What a play drawn up by Westmore and his staff. And the NC State bench goes wild. An instant classic here at Bridgeport. Gino Ariema mystified. And that's the reason you consider fouling. Right now, they're looking to see how much time on the clock. Okay, it was .3, which would only be a tap adjacent to the basket here. Connecticut, very difficult, obviously. They can't time out in advance, but there is time now for a catch and shoot. So point eight to go in overtime. <laughs> what a shot, what a game. Brown Turner ties it. She had been one for six from three tonight. Fudd will be the one to inbound it. UConn is gonna need a prayer or it's gonna be double overtime. Beckers doesn't get it off. And we have a second overtime in Bridgeport. What drama. Moments ago, Rebecca, Jakia Brown-Turner tying it on a three. There's some options here. Reina Perez gets it. Crutchfield coming out. Uh-uh, we want the flare screen. Watch Brown-Turner as soon as it goes in. Incredible. I mean, this game is just sensational. How could it be better? There has never been a double overtime game in the Elite Eight or later until tonight. Welcome to history. The Bulls basketball continues. 77-77, start of the second overtime. Ryan Rucco, Rebecca Lobo, Andrea Carter, Holly Rowe with you. What do you got for us, Drea? Well, to look at this play one more time, Jakia Brown-Turner is a lefty. The pass was to her left hand. Beautiful delivery by Reina Perez. Jakia Brown-Turner barely had to move the ball before she put it up and in. That's she didn't have Paul stroke. <laughs> she didn't have time to move the ball. <laughs> Good pass leads to good shot, right, Drea? Absolutely, Rebecca. Now, something to keep in mind here, Edwards and Nelson Adota are both playing with four fouls. They've navigated it nicely down the stretch of this game. But obviously, more minutes, more opportunities for one of them to foul out. Early here in the second overtime, and look for NC State to go inside to Kinane. Maybe you pick up that fifth foul early on one of the Connecticut bigs. Kinane has 14 points, 6 of 11 shooting, 8 rebounds as well. Nelson Adota and Kinane to jump it up. For the first time in the Elite Eight or later, we have double overtime. As UConn wins the tip. Beckers had 10 in the first overtime period. Here's Fudd around the Nelson Adota screen. Patient offensive set. Beckers again! It's in her blood. Living for these moments. She hasn't missed in overtime. Kanane reverses it in. How about the finishes and big moments tonight from Alyssa Kanane? First play, diagonal up screen, get Kanane on the block. She had a little on her, but still finished on the other side. And what you're talking about, Rebecca, maybe getting that fifth foul on Nelson Adota or Edwards. Could be a game changer. Alyssa Kanane has come through in the clutch tonight over and over again. Beckers has as well. Seven for Beckers, 15 in overtime.
Three-point UConn lead. Kanane wants it. Brown Turner drives it, flips it, can't hit it. Edwards, and a foul. Paige Beckers is just built different. She's built different in the kind of blood, the DNA that lets you do that. Elisa Kanane finishing on the other side of the rim has been terrific. Paige Beckers one more time. Holly. Well, four years ago, we were at the Final Four in Tampa, and Gina Oriema said to me, I've got the next Diana Taurasi coming. And I said, who? It's a kid named Paige Beckers out of Minnesota. I walked out into the parking lot, and she just happened to be coming in the building as part of Kara Lawson's Team USA three-on-three -three team. And I looked at this scrawny kid, <laughs> and I thought, that's the next Diana Taurasi? But I'm going to tell you this, in the overtime, I think I'm starting to believe it. Yeah. First half, two of six from the floor. Second half in overtime, eight for eight for Beckers. Edwards hits two massive free throws. She's improved greatly there, over 80% this season. Five-point UConn lead. Brown Turner on the attack, the kick. Crutchfield, they need it, they have it. On a three. They've regressed to their mean, Ryan. Starting to drain them. Kai Crutchfield continues to live up to that nickname of Kai Crutchfield. Two-point game. That five-point lead a moment ago was the first lead greater than four for either team since the third quarter. Williams denied by Kanane. Looking for help. Flips it out. Fun. No. Second chance points, UConn in front. Perez, the crossover, the dish. Kanane lays it in. Beautiful breakdown from Reina Perez. All right, beautifully done. Nelson Adota had to come over. Edwards could not get back to Kanane. Elisa Kanane with 18 points, 8 for 13 from the floor. It's a two point game. Beckers has not missed in the second half. Beckers finally does. Kanane the rebound. A chance for NC State to tie this game up or pull in front. Perez, the veteran leader directing traffic. Jones dumps it in. Kanane couldn't handle it, couldn't save it. NC State turns it over. A little too far away on the pass from Kayla Jones. The right corner has been good to NC State. They get into the double overtime, and then here, Crutchfield with a big shot, and Connecticut has been terrific on the offensive glass. Oh, this has just been a beautiful basketball game. High level here in Bridgeport. 105 to go in the second overtime. Two point UConn lead. Fudd gives it up. Williams on the attack. That's going to be a block. Now they can look to see whether or not she was in the restricted area. If that's the reason the foul was called a block. Yep. That's a block. The right call made. She's in the restricted area. Even if your toes are outside, but your heel is above, you're in the restricted area. Williams misses the free throw. First missed free throw in a while for UConn after they had started so cold. 68% free throw shooter makes the second. It's a three-point game. 54.8 to go in the second overtime. Each team with one timeout remaining. Crutchfield around the screen. Brown Turner lost it, got it back. Finds Kanane. Perez will take. No rebound. Boyd. And a foul is called on who? It'll be on Edwards, and that 
is her fifth. Or is it on Nelson Adota? Nelson Adota's block was clean. I believe it was on Aaliyah Edwards. It is. Aaliyah Edwards has fouled out. Maybe across the chest from Edwards. Let's see. Right there with the right hand. That would have to be what it was. Yeah. So Edwards is fouled out, and now UConn downsizes with Westbrook. Meanwhile, massive free throws here for Boyd. He's a 78% free throw shooter, five for six tonight. The player who Westmore calls their X Factor. So many can't bear to watch. Boyd misses. Remember, this is like a road game for NC State in Bridgeport, Connecticut. A heavy UConn crowd. Vina Westbrook, important to box out. Second free throw is good. It's a two-point game, two-second difference. Game and shot clock. NC State going to try and pressure into a turnover. Deflection here. Beckers gets it ahead. Williams lays it up and in. It's a four-point UConn lead. 21 seconds to go. Perez with some space. Short on a three. Westbrook out of bounds. And it will be NC State basketball with 13.6 to go. Connecticut worked a lot yesterday on breaking the press. They were able to do it. Kristen Williams gets inside and finishes strong. Westmore not going to take his final time out here. Going to hold on to it. Perez will inbound. Brown Turner back in that right corner. On the attack, lays it in. Two-point game. And now Westmore is going to take his final time out. And Rebecca, this is exactly... Now, Gino's saying, is it my timeout or is it NC State's timeout? If NC State did this last year in the Sweet 16 and then wasn't able to advance the basketball. Could Wes Moore have just done the same exact thing? I think he did. But in order for Gino Oriama, if he wants to advance the basketball, he will then have to use his timeout after Wes Moore's timeout. They both were trying to take timeouts. But I think the officials gave it to NC State. I think you're right. They're going to go to the scorer's table here to settle it. Here's the layup for Brown Turner, and then you'll see Wes Moore call for the timeout. But Rebecca. I'm stunned. Why? You're giving up the chance. You're down. You're giving up the chance to advance the basketball to set up your defense. This is exactly what NC State did in the Sweet 16 last year when they lost to Indiana. And then they couldn't advance it down three in the final seconds. Especially since Connecticut still has one left. So if you set up your full court defense and Connecticut can't inbound, fine. They'll just call their timeout and advance the basketball. We'll see how this shakes out whether or not that ends up playing a big role, but a highly questionable decision from an outstanding head coach in Westmore. 89-87, UConn in front, 10.1 to go in the second overtime. Yeah, we feel you. Rebecca, first ever double overtime game in the Elite Eight or later. There's been so many dramatic moments down the stretch, none more so than Brown Turner's three with under a second to go to send this game into a second overtime. What did Gino Arama tell us earlier today? He said neither of these teams is going to lose the game. Mm. One of these teams is going to go out and win the game and make the plays to win the game. And we've seen that time and time again from both sides. And he said, to win in these games, you need someone to be great. Paige Beckers has in the overtime periods. 23 points since halftime for Paige Beckers. 
15 of them coming in these two overtime periods. A reminder, if you're looking for Michigan and Louisville, that game on ESPNU, we will get you there as soon as this one goes final. Winner of this game will face Stanford in Minneapolis. Winner of Michigan-Louisville will face South Carolina. All right, Rebecca, Connecticut, are they going to use their final timeout to advance it? Yeah. They will. In this way, if you do turn it over, at least NC State has to go the length of the floor in order to score. If you turn it over in your backcourt, that could be an easy one for NC State. You know, Rebecca, so often we see trouble with these sort of inbounds. What are the key things to focus on when you are in a spot like UConn right now, inbounding the ball up two with no timeouts Starts remaining? with your inbounder. It's somebody you trust. Typically, Connecticut has Paige Beckers as their inbounder because she's their best passer and the one they trust, but you also want her receiving the pass. Raina Perez came up with the game-winning steal against Notre Dame in the Sweet 16. Another great passer, Olivia Nelson Adota. This one with size will inbound the ball for Connecticut. 6-5, one of the best passing bigs in the nation. Nelson Adota looking in, looking for someone, has to get it in, finds Fudd. Fudd gets it to the corner. Westbrook finds Williams, and that is the dagger. Williams lays it in, four-point game. The streak lives! Making 14 straight trips to the Final Four for the Connecticut Huskies. An unforgettable classic. And UConn outlasts NC State 91-87 in the first ever double overtime Elite Eight contest. And they hug their injured teammate, Dorka Juhas. With an unforgettable victory, Holly Rowe is with the Stars. The drama of this game, you're winning, you're losing, you're winning and losing. How did you find the focus to close it out in double overtime? It just signifies what we've been through all year. A whole bunch of adversity, highs and lows, ups and downs. But we stay composed and we stay together. And I just love my team, man. I just love my team. Kristen Williams, the dagger at the end. How did you get that inbounds play so easily? He got the ball and they went to trap and I ended up wide open and I just made a layup. You talk about the adversity of the season, an emotional hug there with your teammate who will likely not play again this season. How has that bonded you together to finish this game out for her? This team has been through so much and it's only made us stronger. And if we see one of our sisters gonna go down, we're gonna do it for her. And we all love each other, we're all so close and I just love this team. You're going back home, Paige. The final four is in your home state. What does that mean? Uh, two days ago, I said win or go home, but we won, and I'm still going home. So this is crazy. I don't know. I'm just so excited no matter the location, no matter where it is. I get to keep playing with my team, so I'm super excited. We couldn't have done it with both of you, without both of you. Yeah! Oh, what a scene here in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and what a finish for NC State. The end of an epic run from so many seniors who will move on. Raina Perez, Kai Crushfield, Kayla Jones, Elisa Kunane, all just outstanding collegiate careers for the Wolfpack and for UConn, able to hold off that experienced squad, find a way down the stretch, and win the first ever double overtime game in the Elite Eight or later, and here's the one that sealed it. NC State has to trap Connecticut. Avina Westbrook just does a beautiful job finding the wide open Kristen Williams inside, and that's the moment. 
Gino Ariema knows he's going to another one. 14 straight Final Fours for Gino Ariema and the Yukon Huskies. They will face Stanford Friday night in Minneapolis. And for Westmore's team, a tough finish to an excellent season and run. Gino Ariema is with Holly. Coach, you have called this your most difficult season ever, and yet tonight, triumph through difficulty. I see the tears in your eyes as you wiped them away. How hard was this win tonight? Uh, you know, like I told Wes after the game, uh, I wish we both could go, you know? Uh, it's just been that kind of a year, you know? Uh, they had the game one in regulation, probably. We had it won twice, and they just, and they made us work for it. And thank God Paige came back. And she just gives everybody so much confidence, and then everybody just kind of played. And everybody took turns making plays. It was just, it was just an amazing basketball game. It really was a great showcase for our sport. I know people see that you're now going to 14 straight Final Fours and they think this is just old hat to you, but coach, I see you trembling, you're shaking. This means so much to you, why? Um, I think, you know, I, I, I think when you're younger, you know, you think, I got a million of these left in me, you know, and you get to a certain age then where you go, I don't know how many of these I have left. You don't know how many opportunities you're gonna get to be in this game. Uh, it means more. It means more um, because each time you do it, there's a new set of kids that have never been there, and uh, uh, they came to Connecticut for a chance to play in the Final Four, and it's this overwhelming responsibility that you have to give them a chance, and uh, we did. We did. Leah Edwards, your offensive rebound, Olivia nelson Adota, I want to give your bigs a shout out because you don't win this game without the offensive rebounding. What do you describe their their dedication? Yeah, that, you know, Liv had a tough assignment today and so did Olivia. Their big kid played great tonight. I thought that offensive rebound put back by Leah was just a thing of beauty, right? And, um, you know, and then you're never, People can talk all they want about it. it's a guards game, right? And certainly you can't win without really good guards, but you can have the best guards in the world. If your big guys don't come up big, you're not going to be in the game anyway. So uh, we lost Dorka, and Dorka was having a hell of a game. I mean, she made a big difference when she was in there, and we lost her, and I thought the other two really battled. We played the whole first half almost without Liv, and she, and she played the whole second half in double overtime. I just can't say enough about them. You know, Liv and Kristen especially, you know, they've been carrying this around like, hey, you ever won a national championship at UConn? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happiest for them. More than, and then Navina, you know, she came back for an opportunity to do this. So there's just a lot of great stories on this team. And uh, man, oh man. Uh, from Gino Ariema and Holly Rowe. Gino headed to a 14th straight Final Four as UConn outlasts NC State in a battle of attrition. 91-87, the final in double overtime, and UConn advances to Minneapolis. Paige Beckers going home after her unforgettable second half. UConn faces Stanford. And South Carolina will face the winner of Louisville, Michigan. We'll get you that game in just a moment. For our producer, Kerry Callahan, our director, Jimmy Platt, Andrea Carter, Holly Rowan, the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. I'm Ryan Rucco. Coming up next, it's Michigan and Louisville. Pam Ward and Stephanie White have the call in Wichita. Thanks for being with us on this historic night in Bridgeport.